So what's with the new math kids are learning in school these days? Perhaps you've seen some of the new math textbooks and wonder why they're so confusing. It's almost like they're trying to present simple problems in the most confusing way possible. Consider a simple multiplication equation like 21 times 13. Here's one of the techniques recommended by a widely used grade 5 textbook called Math Makes Sense. Students are encouraged to write out partial products of 21 and 13 and then add them all together as follows. 20 plus 1 times 10 plus 3 equals 20 times 10 plus 20 times 3 plus 1 times 10 plus 1 times 3 equals 200 plus 60 plus 10 plus 3 equals 273. Now, if you're scratching your head trying to figure out how this method works, you're not alone. It sure is a far cry from the standard algorithm where you put one number on top of the other, multiply each of the digits, and then add to get the final product. And yet, you won't find the standard multiplication algorithm in Math Makes Sense, and it's not in most curriculum guides either. Now, there's nothing wrong with this particular math technique. The math is correct. However, many students may never learn the most efficient way of solving basic multiplication questions. To make matters worse, many teachers no longer make students memorize their basic addition and subtraction facts or their multiplication times tables. Remember those drills you used to do when you were a kid? Well, prospective teachers are told in their teacher training courses that they aren't supposed to use such drill and kill methods. Instead, students are apparently supposed to construct their own way of solving math questions. Of course, this goes right back to the debate between romantic progressives and traditionalists. Romantic progressives don't want teachers to show students the most efficient way to solve math questions because that allegedly takes away their creativity. So that's why you see students working on such convoluted word problems. That's why parents, even those with an engineering or accounting background, often have to spend hours trying to figure out the math homework their kids are working on. That's also why students are often expected to keep a so-called math journal where they write about how they feel about math. One of the main arguments made in favor of the new math is that it allegedly helps students develop a conceptual understanding. The argument is, is that teaching students the standard algorithms and getting them to memorize times tables means they may learn how to do basic computations, but they won't develop the deeper understanding they need. The best way, they say, to get students to learn math is for them to develop their own methods of solving math equations, or so they claim. However, this argument sets up a false dichotomy. The way romantic progressives talk, it's either basic skills or conceptual understanding. Why not just do both? Make sure students learn their math facts, master the standard algorithms, and give them opportunities to have fun with numbers and discover new ways of doing things. It's more than possible to do so. Consider the incredible success of John Mighton's JUMP math program. JUMP works on the basic premise that students need to have math problems broken down into small steps, and each step needs to be mastered before moving on to the next step. Once the basics are mastered, students then go on to solve more complex problems. Schools that use JUMP math report that it's far more effective than the new methods recommended by textbooks. The fact is that in order for students to receive a strong grounding in math, they need to spend more time practicing math skills, such as basic addition and subtraction, along with the standard multiplication times tables. Students must practice their basic math facts frequently for it to become automatic. In addition, Math curriculum guides need to specifically require the learning of standard algorithms, and textbooks should contain clear step-by-step -step instructions as to their use. As the success of John Mighton's Jump Math shows, all students are capable of mastering math if they receive the best instruction. Suppose you have a doctor who never treats anyone 
He shows up at his office a few times, but always finds some excuse to avoid seeing any patients. How much do you think that doctor will get paid? If you said zero, you live in the real world. Imagine how difficult life would be if you never learned to read. So many career paths would be permanently closed off. You would even have trouble doing basic things such as ordering a meal in a restaurant or staying up to date on current events. In this day and age, everyone needs to learn how to read fluently. To be honest, if students don't learn this essential skill, not a whole lot else they do in school is going to matter. 